All right, before I start this part, I am going to say, if you guys want to see how I designed this part, go out and check the CAD for CAM side of my actual YouTube channel. That's where you're going to find out how to design different parts to include this part indirectly. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I'm going to flip over from the design workspace over to manufacturer. And with that being said, is we have to create our setup. This is going to be turning or mill turn. We have our X, Y, and Z location, as you can see. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. So from here, I'm actually just going to keep the stock the same as always, guys. I don't really mess with the stock until I know my stock size. And given this is more of a training system, the stock isn't super huge and important. So the first thing I'm going to do, like anybody would, we're going to go ahead and face this off. I'm going to go to the default library, like always, just a good old CNMT right-handed tool. And as you're going to see, in most cases, as always, it's picking up the front of my part and facing that off. We're going to throw on multiple passes as a precautionary in case our stock size changes. Again, we're going to go back and we're going to now do a turning profile rough. I'm going to keep the same tool. Again, just knowing what's going to happen if I don't, we're going to go ahead and say don't allow axial grooving. And now we're facing that straight off all the way to the back. Yes, we're going past a ways, guys. I would be adjusting this more. But really, all I'm trying to do at this moment is just get everything down to the point where we have it. Oop, I faced it twice there. We have a just good, clean, solid stock to work off of for creating our actual mill turn operations. So if I was to take this part right now and simulate it, as you're going to see, we're going to go ahead and turn and face the front. Now we're going to do our OD work, opening up everything and anything that we need. So I will actually adjust my stock now thinking about this. I do want to just kind of show holding on to this. So let's change our length to three inches offset from front. And I'm only going to give it 25 again so that we just have a single facing. Regenerate all my tool pass with control G. I am getting this lead out problem. And again, if you guys didn't know this, you can go in and you could actually tell it based on linking. We want to radial extend that. So you're going to see now it goes all the way down and up and out of my part. So when we do simulate this, we're going to notice that we don't have any collisions or problems, right? So now that we've gotten to this point, we need to cut our pockets. We need to actually put some cross holes in this, and we need to mill those flats. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt the flats because I'm going to use the biggest end mill possible. So if you haven't done this before, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to milling. I'm going to do a just simple 2D contour. We're going to use tool orientation for this. So I'm going to go ahead and orientate my spindle to Z. As you're seeing, I'm just using one of those inside filleted edges. It's not a big deal what you end up selecting. Again, you may need to adjust X and Y based on your machine. However, the key element here is we're just trying to actually cut this profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to contour selection. I'm going to pick that face, and then we're going to go back and grab our tool and see what we can get. Normally, I would go for a half inch end mill if we were on a mill, but today we're going to go for three eighths since we are in a mill turn machine. We may lack torque or RPMs. As you guys may know, is I don't concern myself too much with the selection of speeds and feeds on this because it's more important to get the tool path on the part. And as you're seeing is I am getting a warning here now, and that warning is based off the fact that I don't have a contour selected. So even though I did the actual select contour and I tried to pick this face, it's not actually giving me that profile in any way, shape, or form. So what I may want to do is actually go in with a chain selection. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say open chain. And this is where I'm gonna go through and I'm actually using the alt key to pick that first one little segment. And then I'm walking down my part, picking the rest of my segments and hitting OK. So as you can see, that now projected that line down onto my part. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK and see what we get for a tool path. I'm actually liking that. The only thing I don't like is that we're actually starting right on the edge of this part and we're coming right off the end of this part. So it does give it a little extra stress. And if I go ahead and we simulate this, see if we can get a collision in any way get our tool a little bit more transparent here. So as we're starting off that part, we are coming in. Again, this is just a finishing pass, guys. Don't get super caught up in how we're approaching that stock right now. We're just making sure that we are making it down that face and cleaning up the edge of our, or our actual surface we want to machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give that a little tangential extension. I'm also going to go ahead and kick on a few other things. So let's go ahead and turn on stock. 
What you're noticing here is the stock is much bigger than what was initially put out there. So again, in this case, the stock isn't gonna help me because we've already OD turned this, right? So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. Another trick I'm gonna use here is just making maybe multiple finishing passes. So again, as if I say multiple finishing passes and I'm gonna make you know three passes at 50, this in itself could also help based on what we're doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. As you're gonna see that first pass comes through again as I'm holding down on the keyboard as I drag across that part, awesome. So that first pass makes a nice clean cut. Second pass comes through here. And then lastly, our third pass comes through here, cleaning up that edge. However, again, we're not deep enough here, so we need to adjust that. So we're gonna go again into that tool path. We're gonna go to our heights tab. We're gonna say a selected edge that we wanna work with. And then if you guys know me, I like to drop that past about 20. So I'm just saying negative 20. And just like that, we are now down below that flat edge there. So we should be able to clean up that flat all in one shot. Now I am gonna extend this and add in the second edge at the same time. So we have one open chain. I'm gonna go ahead and add a second open chain. So again, is I'm gonna hold the Alt key here and I'm gonna pick, and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna hit that line a second time, allowing me to extend it now. And a key thing that you guys should remember, you should only see an arrow per face that you wanna use, right? Or I should say a boundary, hypothetically. So if you have a bunch of red arrows along this face right now, you're gonna have a lot of problems when it comes to actually machining this out. Again, we're gonna extend both ends of this. I'm gonna do them symmetrical. If you guys wanna talk a little bit more about being able to extend these individually, go check out my boundary and chain video that I just made the other day. Again, as we're looking at this, we're now coming in, we're machining the backside, we're machining all the way out to the front. We are putting that chamfer on there at the same time as we're milling the flats. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn on our in-process stock. And just like that, you can see we've now accomplished putting the flats on our muzzle brake. So with that, let's go ahead and cut our pockets now from the side profile. But before I do that, actually, I'm gonna come up to the top and let's go ahead and pop the holes in the top of this. So I'm gonna go over to my drilling tab. I'm gonna go find my spot drill that I wanna use. I do believe I have a nice three eights in my library. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my geometry, which is going to be the actual face. So we're gonna select faces. As you're noticing here is I can't pick that face right now. And the reason why I can't pick that face is because we've yet to set Z to our hole. So again, as I'm gonna use the inside of that hole, I'm gonna set my Z there. I did have to flip it up. Again, your X, Y may matter on your machine, guys, so keep that in mind. And now we could actually pick that chamfer surface to create our spot drilling on each one of those. One thing you are noticing here is my spot drill in particular for this hole is going to be much too small for the chamfer that I need. So I may actually leave this one off and go back to a little more traditional approach. And I think that's what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna cancel this tool path. I'm gonna go up here to 2D bore. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pick a much smaller tool and I'm gonna bore these holes out. So we're gonna go ahead and go into that sample library, just a simple flat end mill. Should be able to squeeze a 3 16 down in there. Again, we do have to do our tool orientation. So we're gonna go Z up. From there, we're gonna go ahead and pick our faces. So there's one, two, and three. Again, now we're boring those. However, at a little bit of a glance in here, we are starting a little low. Good news, these holes are all the same. So we're gonna use a selected top. We're gonna to also use a selected bottom. And as always, guys, we're gonna go ahead and pop that down by about 20 just to break through. So we do need to be a little cautious though of our breakthrough here because we do have this lovely filleted edge here. So I might actually take that down to about 30. One neat thing is, is if you guys actually were to select this edge here, it will naturally give you that edge as the lowest point and then add in addition to whatever you want that to be. So there's our boring cycle to bore out those three holes. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay here. Again, our stock is updating automatically. We don't have any weird stock laying in the middle here. So it looks like that end mill is suffice. From here, we could actually flip over to our side and start to mill our pockets. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to 2D. I am going to go to a 2D contour because I have an idea here that might work out pretty well for me. So we're going to actually use this upper chain around our part. So I'm going to go ahead and say chain. We want a closed chain. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that edge. Again, I'm making the one rule that you shouldn't do is we don't have tool orientation set. So let's cancel. Go to my tool orientation. We're going to go ahead and use an edge this time with my Z up. Now I'm going to go back and pick my pocket. And as you're seeing, I can pick that chain much better. So we're going to machine out these pockets here. I'm going to go ahead and grab all three. We're going to go and do that. However, we're going to do this a little different than what most people might do. So I'm actually going to start at a model top. And the reason why I'm starting at model top is because we've already spun this profile. I'm actually only going to machine down to the origin, which if you guys didn't know, my origin is dead center on that bore. And as always, we're going to go ahead and drop that, you know, roughly another 10 to 20 thou to get past that center line. But this is where the magic's going to happen. I don't want to go in there and I don't want to go around that profile a bunch of times. I actually want to ramp down into my part. So I'm turning on ramp to give me a little different strategy as we go down inside there. And one thing you're going to notice on how we've done this, the problem I'm going to have is the fact that we're not able to actually clear out the inside of this one before cutting that actual profile. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to go back. We're going to go ahead and say 2D adaptive clearing, or if you want to do 2D pocket clearing, that's up to all of you. Actually, there's another way we could do this. We could just add two passes, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to make a roughing pass. And we're going to give it a distance that we want. And in this case, that didn't fix our problem. We're now just roughing down and then stepping over for a finish pass. So we're going to go back to my original idea, which is going to mean I'm going to control Z back. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and go to 2D adaptive clearing. Again, set our tool orientation, Z up. From here, we're going to pick our pocket, which is this guy. And again, we're only going to go to the origin. And if you guys didn't see the other video when I did this, is you do have to account for the fact that there is a stock to leave of 20. So if normally I go 10 to 20 past, well, I'm going to add an additional 20 to that to make sure we're going deep enough. So from that, we're going to leave some stock on the walls and the floors. That'll just make it much easier when we come back to do everything else. And if you wanted to, again, looking at this, we have a lot of room to get that tool down in there. So let's go ahead and bump forward one, reorder. I may actually want to rough out each pocket before going in and cleaning it out. That's up to you at the end of the day. It could be a much better workflow for you. Again, this is where you're going to have the ability to cam out multiple ways. Again, if I go to 2D pocket clearing, I'm going to go ahead and set my Z as you see me do. Let's grab my pockets here. Again, we're going to go down to the origin. That's going to start from model top. And then based on pocket clearing, we do have the ability to incorporate a finish pass as well. So there is a lot of different ways for you guys to accomplish this based on what's going on. Again, you may want to do something like multiple depths as well. I'm just here to give you a couple different strategies to be able to knock out those pockets nice and clean. So now that we did one side, let's go ahead and replicate that to the other side. So Given that we were using pretty simple parameters to do so, I'm actually going to right click this pocket path and I'm going to go in and I am going to not do a derive. So a lot of you may be thinking derive right now. We're going to go back. We're going to do a duplicate. And the reason for that duplicate is, is all I have to do is flip my Z axis. Because if you think about it, I already have my profile selected. Profile is the same from both sides. I just need Z to start from the opposite side. Given that we're always working from a model top to my origin, as soon as I hit OK, what you're going to notice is we're now going back the opposite way. Again, this makes your life very easy to take something that is symmetrical left and right and duplicate the process. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start breaking a lot of these edges. So I'm going to go in now, and in this case, my edges are actually modeled. So I'm not going to 2D chamfer. I'm actually going to go for a 2D contour. And the reason for that is this is, again, a pro tip is to be able to select the lower edge. There I go again without tool orientation. It happens to the best of us, right? 
and pick the lower edge of what I want to profile. And when I give Fusion a actual chamfer or spot drill, what you're going to notice is, is I get an additional option over here on the passes tab, which is the chamfer. So now I'm going to leave the chamfer to zero and I'm just going to bump it a hair past the bottom. And what you're going to notice is due to the chamfer edge of my spot drill, you're going to have this actual line down here that's offset at whatever that angle is. In my case, that's a 45 degree chamfer. So we bumped it down and away by 20, still cleaning up that actual chamfer as needed. The cool thing is, is with this chamfer tool in particular, we have the ability, as you're going to see here, is I can go in with a trace tool path, which is three dimensional. Again, we're going to do our tool orientation, which is one of the most important things. We're going to go ahead and throw Z axis up as always. And for some reason, I don't know if it's my luck, guys, Z always goes the wrong way. However, we're now going to pick, again, that lower chain of what we want to do. And this is where a lot of people confuse the actual trace toolpath is we want to use a actual left compensation. Again, we have a chamfer width and we have a chamfer tip offset. So if we go ahead and plug in our 20 and hit OK, you're going to notice we're now doing a three dimensional chamfer around that part using that specific tool. So again, just like we did before, we want to do this on the opposite side. We're going to go for a duplicate here. I'm going to go ahead and flip my Z axis. I am going to repick my chains here. So let's unselect those, repick them this way, and go ahead and hit OK. So now let's take this part. Let's simulate it out. Let's make sure we don't have any collisions. We are getting some collisions. So this will be interesting to see what we hit. I think I already know what we're hitting. But the luxury of Fusion is, is in a real world scenario, we're seeing this collision in real time of one of my tool holders for my live tooling hit my part. However, if I skim my program down here at the bottom, it looks like that's the only tool causing me any type of problem. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna go back to that tool. So when we come in and we start to do those contour tool paths, I am gonna edit the tool. We're gonna go ahead and stick that cutter out a ways longer. Again, this is maybe where you want a half inch tool versus this quarter inch. So we're gonna go ahead and say that is now sticking out 1.5. We're gonna go back and we're gonna hit accept and then we're gonna regenerate this tool path. And again, let's simulate this from the top to see what we get. So it looks like we do have some more collisions coming here in a moment. I assume that's going to be attributed to our very small tool path. And what we're doing here is due to failing to make multiple step downs, we're hitting the shoulder of the tool because we don't have the flute length. So again, we can now fix that. We're going to go ahead. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clean up a little bit of this. Let's get the contours out of the way. We did this as a idea that pocket would probably be better. We're going to go ahead and turn on multiple depths. As you're seeing, we're now doing multiple depths again. I'm going to go over to the other one. We're going to kick on multiple depths as well. And that is looking much better. So let's go again from the top. While this is running, I am going to give you guys the, the typical, hey, if you guys like this content, want to see more content like this, feel free to hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel to always get updates. As well, we did do a video earlier today about how we designed this actual part that's running. So as you're seeing, that is running down into that pocket. We're not seeing a collision yet. It looks like we actually lucked out just being able to go 50% of the way down to the origin. Again, we are going down. We're roughing out those pockets, cleaning everything up. We'll just go ahead and get us flipped over, trying to get us streamlined up to our chamfer tool path, which we're going to want to slow down for here. So let's get this going. And we are just about there. So now here we are, we're coming in with that 90 degree spot tool. We're breaking all of those edges, chamfering everything off. Again, we're using that trace tool path to do that three dimensional kind of chamfer that we have around those profiles. It won't be the most exact as per how that was modeled. However, given the nature of what our customer wanted in this case, or my design, I'm only doing this so that nobody cuts their fingers on these sharp edges. So with that, before I jump off guys and let you go for the rest of your day, as always, it's a pleasure doing this for you. If you want to support this channel in other ways outside of likes and subscribes, feel free to check out my website and go ahead and grab your product directly from JitCAD Cam. We are an authorized Autodesk reseller. 
We are here to sell and support you in any way we can. 